Welcome back to the Parasitology Lecture Series. The topic for today is liver flukes. When discussing liver flukes, we focus on the two major classifications, Pasciola group and Clonorchis opistorchis group. Liver flukes are found worldwide, especially in regions where sheep and cattle are raised. Over the years, liver fluke infections have been increasing, partly due to changing agricultural practices and global trade. The first group of liver flukes is the fasciola group, which includes fasciola hepatica and fasciola gigantica. Fasciola hepatica is also known as the sheep liver fluke, while fasciola gigantica is commonly referred to as the giant liver fluke. Liver flukes in this group are quite large compared to other flukes. They can grow up to 7 cm long and 1.5 cm wide. The adult fluke has a distinct cone-shaped head with prominent shoulders which marks the anterior portion of the body. Fasciola hepatica is primarily seen in parts of Europe, the Middle East, and in the Andean region, while Fasciola gigantica is more commonly found in Africa, Asia, and other tropical regions. In Asia, Pasciola gigantica is found in China, Vietnam, Korea, India, and Thailand. Fasciolysis, the disease that is caused by Fasciola species, remains the most important helmet infection in cattle. However, human infections are becoming more prevalent, particularly in regions like South America and Asia, due to contaminated water and consumption of aquatic plants. Recent studies have also shown that climate change is affecting the geographic distribution of fasciola with warmer temperatures facilitating the spread of the parasite to newer regions. Infection occurs when humans ingest the infective stage called the metacercariae through the consumption of contaminated water plants. The metacercariae travel to the duodenum where the parasite larva is released, and the larva then penetrate the intestinal wall and migrate through the peritoneum to the liver parenchyma. This migration can last up to six days. Once inside the liver, they continue their migration as they further develop while feeding on mostly liver parenchyma. After about six more weeks, they finally locate the biliary ducts, set up shop there, where they fully mature into adult worms. Maturation takes about three to four months from ingestion, and the, the lifestyle of the mature fluke is around nine to 13 years. Once mature, adult fasciola worms release unembryonated eggs into the biliary ducts, and the eggs are then excreted together with feces. The eggs then embryonate in fresh water a process that takes around 9 to 15 days, and then the embryonated eggs hatch into Miracidia, which seek out its first intermediate host, a typical freshwater pond snail. Studies have highlighted the role of different snail species in facilitating transmission, with Galba truncatula being the primary host in many regions, while new species such as Fosaria, have been identified as playing a role in areas with changing environmental conditions. In the snail, the parasite undergoes several stages, such as the sporocyst, radia, and cercarial forms, before the mature cercaria is released. The cercaria swims in water, seeking its second intermediate host, freshwater plants, where it insists as metacercaria, and completes the life cycle. The most common freshwater plants associated with liver flukes include watercress in western countries, water parsley in South Korea, and water bamboo, water caltrop, and morning glory in most endemic Asian countries. In addition to humans, fasciola undergoes its complete life cycle in cattle, sheep, and sometimes camels. These herbivorous livestock are the primary definitive host of the parasite. 
humans are considered accidental hosts since they typically do not play a significant role in the parasite's transmission cycle. Symptoms associated with fasciolysis can be divided into two major phases, the acute phase and the chronic phase. The acute phase of fasciolysis is characterized by the larval migration that was discussed earlier. Due to the invasive nature of the larvae as it penetrates through different tissues and feeds on the liver, the immune system responds strongly, leading to a variety of symptoms. These symptoms include vague abdominal pain, usually in the vicinity of the liver area, occasional diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, fever, eosinophilia, and hepatomegaly. Eosinophilia is highly correlated with the acute migration phase, and a specific fasciola antigen can be detected in the blood during this phase, aiding in early diagnosis. The triad of high fever, hepatomegaly, and eosinophilia is diagnostically significant in the acute phase of fasciolysis detection. The chronic phase of fasciolysis occurs once the parasite reaches the biliary tract and fully matures into an adult. In this phase, the adult flu feeds and produces eggs but does not typically cause an intense immune response. Symptoms in the chronic phase can include intermittent biliary obstruction, inflammation in the biliary tract, fibrosis which can potentially lead to cirrhosis, and gallstone formation or cholelithiasis in rare cases as the worm or its eggs form the nidus for stone formation. Due to the blockage of the flow of bile into the gastrointestinal lumen, persons with chronic fasciolysis may also develop secondary malnutrition complications such as malabsorption of fats and amino acids due to incomplete esterification. In most cases, chronic fasciolysis is subclinical or discrete as the infected person continually shed out the parasite ova in their stools. In rare cases, the parasite may disseminate to other organs such as the lungs, brain, or eyes, particularly in severe or untreated infections. There are also rare cases of adult fasciola worms being ingested from raw or improperly cooked liver. These adult flukes can attach to the posterior pharynx, causing pain, difficulty of breathing, and even bleeding from the nasopharynx. This complication is called Halzun in Lebanon or Marara in Sudan. Diagnosis of fasciolysis traditionally involves stool microscopy where you look for the characteristic fasciola eggs, which are among the largest of the helminth eggs. Fasciola eggs are ellipsoidal and operculated, and they can be distinguished from other helminth eggs by their size and shape. Serological tests such as ELISA for antibody detection, can also be helpful, particularly during the acute invasive phase of the infection where there is a strong immune response. These tests are also useful in diagnosing ectopic fasciolysis and it helps to rule out false positives from other parasitic infections. Emerging point-of-care tests for fasciola antigens are also showing promise for field diagnosis, providing faster results than traditional stool microscopy. One example is the lateral flow immunoassay test Cirofluke. While a rapid point-of-care immunochromatographic device has been developed more recently. PCR-based methods are now more commonly used, especially in cases of chronic infection or when stool samples fail to show eggs. These molecular techniques can detect fasciola DNA with greater sensitivity and accuracy. Radiologically, fasciolysis can appear as multiple confluent lesions with tunnel-like branching in CT scan and as small, linear, echogenic lesions in ultrasound. Among all the flukes, fasciola species are not susceptible to praziquantel, which is commonly used to treat other trematodes. Therefore, Alternative drugs are used to treat fasciolysis. The current first-line treatment for human fasciolysis is triclabendazole, which is highly effective against both juvenile and adult flukes. However, 
its availability is still limited to certain countries such as Egypt, Ecuador, Venezuela, France, and more recently, in the United States. Triclobendazole resistance has been reported in some areas, particularly in livestock, which could potentially lead to resistance in human infections as well. Bethionol is the second-line drug. Albendazole, artesanate, and nitazoxanide are being investigated as alternative treatments with nitazoxanide showing promise in recent clinical trials. Mirazid, a natural combination preparation of mir oleoresin, is also currently being investigated as an antifasciola drug. Prevention and control rely on basic public health strategies such as avoiding contaminated water as metasarcaria can sometimes be ingested from contaminated freshwater sources. Improved sanitation, proper washing and cooking of water plants, and food safety education, particularly for those who are handling food. The One Health Initiative now emphasizes the importance of integrating veterinary health with human health in controlling fasciolysis. Veterinary preventive chemotherapy of cattle and sheep is a key measure in reducing human infections through prophylaxis and treatment of livestock. There are also ongoing efforts to develop a vaccine for fasciola hepatica with promising candidates under investigation in animal models. However, these are still in the preclinical phase and there are still no human vaccines available at present. And that ends the lecture on the liver fluke fasciola. Thanks for watching.